If you asked anyone on the street right now, name a brand of soda, they are very likely to say Coca-Cola or Pepsi. And that's for good reason. Coke and Pepsi have reigned supreme on the cola market for over a century. Their handle of the market is so tight, it would almost be impossible for anyone to take over their territory. But there was a moment in the 90s when giant among giants, Coca-Cola had a misstep. A misstep called OK Soda. OK was an attempt to go after a younger demographic, but judging by this commercial, you will be able to tell it was a miserable failure. But perhaps more OK Soda would make you feel even more OK. Please note, there's no such thing as too much OKness. A failure it was, and with the giant showing vulnerability, the door cracked open for a competitor to step in and attempt the impossible. To take down Coca-Cola as number one, enter the one and only Sir Richard Branson. In the mid-90s, he was at the height of his domination. Virgin Airlines, Virgin Records, Virgin Games, Virgin you name it and he sold it. It seemed like whatever market he entered, he succeeded. Why would soda be any different? So Branson advises a plan for Virgin Cola. He wouldn't need to formulate his own soda recipe or build a soda factory. He would simply go to a Canadian company called Cot Beverages. Cot was, and still is, one of the leading providers of cola in the world. Although they never put their logo or name on any of their products, this is because Cot formulates and bottles all the sodas for grocery stores and big box stores like Kroger, Publix, and Walmart. And I mean, who doesn't love Dr. Thunder? So Cot already had the infrastructure in place to make the soda, leaving Branson to do what he does best, marketing. Commercials, print ads, and stunts would sell Virgin Cola, and Branson knew how to get people's attention. In 1994, Virgin Cola launches in England, and then four years later, Virgin Cola launches in the United States. The marketing blitz began on day one. The media press kit at launch looked like this, and it stated, and then this happened. You arrived in the studio, or to the studio this morning, driving a tank. You are going to go down Fifth Avenue later, and then you're gonna head into Times Square and break that tank through a wall of Coke and Pepsi to say you're gonna liberate the Americans from these two soft drink giants. Yep, he drove a tank down Times Square, ran over a massive wall of Cokes, and then fired the tank at a Coke sign. This was obviously before 9-11. Overseas, he took a crane and covered a huge Coke sign with his own sign for Virgin Cola. He was everywhere, on every channel, promoting. And people began to take notice. They began to try Virgin Cola. And sales began to take off. So Richard, are you nervous? How do you... <laughs> the marketing continued, and Branson teamed up with model and actress Pamela Anderson to create a Virgin Cola bottle that resembled the curves of her body. The bottle was appropriately named the Pammy, and here was their press conference. Whoa, easy, easy Branson, yikes. There was even product placement on the biggest show in television at the time, Friends. Hey, hey man, how'd the audition go? Estelle said I didn't get it. Joey. I think it's time to give up the bag. <laughs> and the TV commercials. They were bold. They were in your face. They were sexual. And they were anything but traditional. You'll find my phone number on the side of the can. You dirty little boy. Stephen, repeat after me with this ring. With this ring, I commit myself to you. I commit myself to you. Michael, repeat. You can taste our love every time you swallow. Virgin Cola was everywhere. <laughs> it's a very um, uh, exciting uh, day for us uh, uh, here in Japan. Uh, getting uh, distribution to compete with uh, Coca Cola. Um, who've dominated this market for many years has not been easy. At first, Coca-Cola did not take notice of Branson and his little passion project of Virgin Cola. And then something, something changed. 
sales from Virgin Cola started to take away from Coca-Cola. Shelf space in groceries and convenience stores began to trade Coke for Virgin. Talk around town began to pick up about Virgin. It was clear. Virgin was moving in fast, and the alarm bells at Coca-Cola headquarters in Atlanta, Georgia, began to sound. For a year or two, it looked like we were going to take Coke for everything they had. Um, we were out selling them in, in Britain, in, in all, all the retailers that we were stopped. Coke is quick to put together their own special task force whose sole job was to destroy Virgin and regain the market share they had suddenly lost. They got um, bagfuls of suitcases of money. Uh, they got a DC-10 on the, on the runway at Atlanta. They filled it with squat teams. They arrived in England and uh, retailers um, suddenly became very wealthy. Coke appointed one of their English employees to go overseas and to cut deals with any and all stores that sold Coke and Virgin. These deals were cut in secret, and almost overnight, Virgin Cola began to disappear from shelves. But Branson and his team didn't realize it until, well, I'll let Branson tell you. We did not know this was going on. I mean, they, you know, I would ring up Tesco's and say, what are you doing? You're taking Virgin Cola off all the shelves. Sales began to plummet, but Branson wasn't ready to give up just yet. They had to make a pivot. The new Mini V from Virgin is a bit of a handful. But Mini V wasn't enough. After years of an extraordinary effort to dethrone Coke and Pepsi, Virgin Cola began to scale back production. And by 2005, they had almost completely halted all production. Remember the English Coca-Cola employee who was tasked to go overseas and take down Virgin Cola? Well, she has a new boss. A, a lady arrived who announced to me that she was the new manager of Virgin Group at Lloyds Bank. And she, we went out to dinner and it turned out that she was the lady at Coke at the time who'd been in charge of the kneecapping exercise. And now she was my bank manager. And I wasn't sure whether to strangle her or not. But. And it wasn't all grim for Sir Richard Branson. He gained a new employee, and he also learned a valuable lesson. When we took on Coca-Cola, a can of cola, Virgin Cola, and a can of Coke, you know, that ours may taste a little bit better than theirs, uh, but we're not exceptionally better. Virgin learned from the Virgin Cola experience to only launch products where we were a lot better than the Goliaths we were up against. There are no more Virgin Colas around. However, if you still want a Virgin Cola, you're in luck. Due to a licensing deal, Virgin Cola is still sold in Afghanistan. True story. Hey y'all, thank you for watching. I love making these mini documentaries. If you like them, hit the subscribe button. That way I know you're out there and you want to see more. Also, if you want to see the Baywatch episode that's featured here starring Little Richard and Richard Branson, you should click it in the description below. It's mind-blowing.